Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to go over the basics of building your own computer. Let's get started. If you haven't built a PC before or you haven't built one in a while, then hopefully this video will be useful to you. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I had to build a new computer for this YouTube channel. The old computer that I was using was, I would say, a little past its prime. Overall, my old computer wasn't actually that bad, but I did take a few shortcuts when I was building it, which sacrificed performance later on. So here were the computer specs that I was replacing. The chip, the CPU, was an AMD FX8320. I had 16 gigs of RAM, and the video card that I was using was a Radeon R7 370. And one of the components that was really hampering my system, really dragging it down and making it show its age, was the motherboard. And for that, I had a Gigabyte 970A D3P. And if you don't know what any of those terms mean, you may need to do some additional research outside of this video, but I will try to make this video as simple as possible. And those were my old specifications. So what do I need in order to go to new specifications? What do I need from here? Now there are two major things to consider when building a new PC. Number one is how much you're willing to spend because a budget will dictate the quality of your system. The second thing to consider is what will you use your PC for? For example, if you have a system designed for data entry, it may look different than a system designed for light internet usage. If you've got a system designed specifically for gaming, it will probably look different than a system designed for gaming and streaming and video editing. And then on top of that, if you have a budget of $500 and want the top of the line gaming system, it's probably not going to happen unless you find massive deals and have coupons and vouchers and a whole lot of discounts because a top tier gaming system is very costly. Now, once you have your budget set and you also have a good idea of what you want your PC to do, head over to PCPartPicker.com. I love this website because it's free to use and it has a ton of information. If you're unfamiliar with building PCs, then I would recommend clicking view the build guides and it gives you an idea here of different PCs at different price points to achieve different things. And there are a number of build guides here, gaming, streaming, home office, low budget, all the way up to high budget builds. And these are all really great reference points on where to start building. You can actually just choose any one of these builds and go with the parts that are listed. On this home office build, there's a great description here of all the parts and why they were chosen, as well as where you can find the lowest prices for each part. And a great feature of this, for example, if you don't like the look of the case or something, you can actually just click this, customize the parts list. So it shows all of the parts here and then you can just customize to your heart's content. And if you're a bit more of an expert or a do-it-yourselfer, you can just choose System Builder and start from scratch. Another reason I like this website is because on the System Builder page here, it lists pretty much everything you need for a PC. So it's really hard to forget something or mess something up. And if you remember, at the beginning of this video, I said I was building a computer for me for gaming, streaming, and video editing. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is choose a CPU. So I'll click the choose a CPU button and it brings me to a massive list here with a whole bunch of different products at different price points. Now there are two major CPU manufacturers, Intel and AMD. And years ago, people used to immediately write AMD off as the budget system and Intel was the way to go. However, in recent years, and especially since last year, this has changed dramatically. If you're going head to head Intel versus AMD, you can check out a plethora of videos on YouTube talking about the two different chip manufacturers. But right now, arguably, AMD is leaps and bounds ahead of Intel. Something else you'll notice are the numbers. And if you're confused as to what they are at a very high level, completely high level, completely non-scientific, the higher the number, the better the CPU. For example, a Ryzen 5 3600 is arguably better than a Ryzen 5 2600. And another super high way of looking at things, if you are going for a more basic system, you're probably going to be looking at an AMD Ryzen 3 or an Intel i3. For a more mid-tier system, you're probably looking at an Intel i5, maybe even an Intel i7, and an AMD Ryzen R5 or R7. And for a higher tier system, for a more robust system, you're probably looking at an Intel i7 or i9, as well as an AMD R7 and R9. 
And if you're unsure of what CPU to pick up, that's absolutely fine. It took me a while to determine what CPU I needed because it's essentially the main brain of your system. It's a very important piece. So I would recommend coming here to Reddit build a PC. It's r slash build a PC. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. There are almost 2 million members here. So if you have a question and it's very basic or something specific and maybe slightly nuanced, then I'm pretty sure there will be someone out of the 2 million members who might be able to help. And here's a tip for gamers. If you're still kind of unsure of what parts you need or what CPU you need, go to Steam and take a look at the recommended system requirements for the specific games you want to play. And for my computer, I will be doing things like gaming and streaming and video editing, so I will need a fairly robust CPU, a very capable CPU. And in that case, I am going with AMD, and I'm actually choosing a Ryzen 7 3700X. The next step listed out is to choose a CPU cooler. Now, sometimes this is an optional step. For example, my AMD Ryzen 7 includes a CPU cooler with it. And since it comes with a CPU cooler, I don't really need to purchase an additional one. However, I do plan on overclocking my CPU because I want to get a little extra performance out of it for free. And on top of that, I want something that runs quiet because I do a lot of video recording and I don't really want to be able to hear the CPU in the background. And this page is actually very, very helpful because it shows the fan RPM as well as the noise level. So I quite like that because generally here, the higher the dB rating, the louder the fan's going to be. And there are a ton of different options here. The option that I'm going to choose is actually the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 because I really like this cooler. On top of that, this cooler is absolutely massive. It's very, very big. So at the same time, it will do a really good job of keeping my CPU cool when I do stress it and overclock it. Next up is to choose a motherboard. This is a very, very important step. And I will stress that because I butchered my old system by purchasing a cheap motherboard that did not perform well, that I couldn't really overclock with, and that really ended up hampering my system. And generally, my rule of thumb here is taking a look at the reviews and seeing if people are running into any issues with it, uh, especially in terms of overclocking or performance or anything like that. For example, in my old motherboard, I had issues with power to the USB ports. When I did some research later on, which I should have done before, I found out that that was actually a common issue. Now, in terms of motherboard brands, there are a ton of different brands out there. People have their own preferences. I recommend two for my own personal preference as well as the preferences of others that I know. And those are MSI and ASUS. And for me, I'm looking for something that's very robust and powerful, something that has USB ports built in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, as well as something that I can use later with a better CPU down the road. So I'm actually going to go with the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero with Wi-Fi. The next step is to choose memory, and this is the RAM that is in your computer, the random access memory. So if we take a look, there are a ton of different options. In this day and age, I would definitely recommend 16 gigabytes over 8, because at 8 gigabytes, you're really not future-proofing your system very well, and you will probably struggle with day-to-day -day tasks. And yes, the best Raspberry Pi only has 4 gigabytes, but there is a major difference between a Raspberry Pi and a desktop computer running Windows and Windows programs. I would definitely recommend 16 gigabytes at the very minimum. For me, I need at least 32 gigabytes because I was running into memory issues on my last PC with everything that I was doing. And for my PC, I'm going to be using the G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series 32 gigabytes. At DDR4 with 3200 megahertz, it's actually very good RAM at a very good price to performance ratio. You can also go crazy here if you want and use some RGB RAM. However, it will cost you a little bit more for those color effects. The next step is to choose a hard drive. For me specifically, I have four hard drives in my current computer and I will be using all of those in my new computer. So I really don't need to buy one here. In terms of overall performance, you definitely want a solid state drive over the old style of hard drive. So the old style of hard drive is great just for simple storage, but if you want performance, you want Windows to boot up really quick, then a solid state drive is the way to go. If you're going for speed, stay away from anything that has RPM behind it. Those are the older style drives that are notoriously slower. So for my computer, I actually have an older style of SSD, the SATA style, and I'm going to be using that. I have two of them. 
Now, in terms of the brand new style of SSD, you want to be looking at something like this. The Samsung 970 Evo, either 500 gigabytes or one terabyte will probably be more than enough space. For me, I have four different drives and that's a bit of an overkill, but at the same time, I run Windows and my programs off one drive. I run my games off a secondary drive and the third and fourth drives I have for storage. By having four drives, it really reduces the risk of me losing data if something catastrophic were to happen. Now I have two different drives full of just storage, full of documents and photos and videos that I can just unplug and plug into a different computer if need be. The next step here is to choose a video card. And this is where things get very expensive very fast. There are a ton of different cards by a ton of different manufacturers. Now, a lot of this will come down to your own preference and what you're looking for, but I generally recommend NVIDIA GeForce over AMD Radeon. Now, in terms of manufacturers, there are a ton of them out there, and largely this will come down to personal preferences, but I usually recommend a Zeus and MSI. In terms of chipsets, there are a ton of different options as well. Now, if you are a gamer and trying to future-proof your system just a little bit, I would recommend an RTX-based chip, but you can also get away with just a standard GTX. And for this, I would recommend, again, going to Reddit if you don't know, or taking a look at your games if you are gaming to see what video cards they recommend. Now, if you're trying to do a little bit more with your video card, I would recommend definitely at least a 1660 Ti or a 1660 Super. And for me personally, I'm going with the RTX 2060 Super, the MSI Armor OC. So this is decent price to performance and exactly what I'm looking for. Now I could go for something top of the line here, completely top of the line and easily double the cost of my graphics card. And it would run games at ultimate graphics, no problem. But I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. The MSI GeForce RTX 2060 Super will run most games at high or ultimate settings without issue. And now this is a really fun part and not near as stressful. And this is choosing a case. So choosing a case largely comes down to personal preference. Do you want a smaller case? Do you want a larger case? Do you want a case with front USB ports? Do you want a case designed to keep your unit cool? Do you want a case designed to keep your unit quiet? Do you want a white case? Do you want a black case? Do you want a case with neon lights with a glass side? You can choose pretty much anything you want here. And if a case is not expensive, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not as good. Maybe it doesn't have all of the features, but maybe it has the features that you want. It all depends on your tastes. If you're looking at something a little lower on the price point, I would recommend the Corsair Carbide Series 275R. In my opinion, it's a very sleek looking case. I like the looks of it and it's priced right. It's very inexpensive. And for me, I need something quiet with some noise suppression. I'm looking to make sure my computer is not loud when I'm recording videos and I record it right beside my computer. So if I can hear the fans whirring up, it's going to be a problem because you'll hear it on the microphone. So I need something with some noise suppression. If you remember, I also went with a silent CPU cooler. I also want to go with a quiet case and then that way I don't hear the video card spinning up. I don't hear the CPU cooler at all. I don't really hear much of anything. So I'm going to go with the Be Quiet, specifically the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 Rev 2. This case is known to be very quiet and it's something that I'm looking for. On top of that, it also looks pretty cool. Now in general, as a rule of thumb, a case designed for noise suppression will probably run warmer than a case that's not because the case that's designed for noise suppression, everything is kind of insulated in there. So if you have a case that's designed for maximum airflow, it will run very cool, but at the same time also be louder. The next step is to choose a power supply. So there are different options here. I would definitely recommend taking a look at this estimated wattage. So it lets you know how many watts your system is actually going to be using. So you don't want to get a power supply that doesn't give enough power to your PC. So right here it says 369 watts, but under load I might actually use considerably more. There are a lot of intricacies choosing a power supply. I would probably recommend checking out Reddit Build a PC and ask if you have questions there. But for me, as a completely non-scientific way of doing things, I usually look at how much wattage I have and then double it to determine my power supply. This makes sure I have ample power to my system under load and also gives me a bit of flexibility in terms of adding things later on to my computer if I wanted to maybe add some more RAM or something like that. When you're choosing a power supply, you also have to choose the efficiency of that power supply. And that's where you see 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. 
My recommendation is the age old saying, go for gold. So I really think gold is a good baseline in which you should be looking at. Something else to consider, some power supplies are fully modular and some aren't. So this power supply, for example, has a cable that's built right into the unit. This one has no cables that are built in. Now for power supplies, I generally recommend Corsair. Corsair and EVGA are both pretty good. I was going to pick up the Corsair RMX, the 80 plus gold at 750 watts. It's fully modular and it is a very good price for what you get. However, Be Quiet is sending me a power supply and Be Quiet is all about noise suppression, so I'm really curious to see how it works. I will be doing a build with the 750 watt Corsair and I'm also going to do a build with the Be Quiet power supply. So for this build, I'm going with the Be Quiet Straight Power 11, it's 80 plus gold at 1000 watts. Now 1000 watts is way more than I need, but gives me a ton of flexibility in terms of upgrades later on, especially if I wanted to include a secondary video card. So for this video, I'm going to go with the Be Quiet Straight Power 11, 80 plus gold at 1000 watts. Next up is to choose an optical drive. Now this is like a CD-ROM if you're going to use that. I haven't had a CD-ROM in my computer in maybe five years and I've never needed one. So I'm not going to add one to this system. Next up is to choose an operating system. Now obviously if you want to save a lot here and go with a free version, you can go with Linux. Linux is absolutely free most of the time, if not all of the time, and it's very, very good. I love Linux. So you can go with Linux or you can go with Microsoft Windows 10, either the Home or the Pro versions. Now if you don't know the difference between Home or Pro, you probably don't need Pro. So you can save yourself 30 bucks and go with the home version. So in terms of 32 versus 64 bit windows, most modern PCs will use 64 bit windows. Most modern chips support 64 bit. On top of that, 32 bit windows supports a maximum of four gigabytes of RAM. Chances are you will be using more than four gigs of RAM. So 64 bit is the way to go. So next you can choose additional software if you want or choose a monitor. Now I'm going to be using two monitors that I already own. So I don't need to buy monitors for this build, but you can if you want. Now in terms of monitors, there are a ton of different brands, a ton of different sizes, and a ton of different options. Mostly this comes down to personal preference. I will say two things here. One, pay attention to the response time. The lower the response time, the better. Secondly, if you're gaming, try to go for 144 hertz or better. Now 144 hertz is very, very good. If you don't have 144 hertz, that's okay too. Really when it comes down to it, it's personal preference. And that's pretty much it. Now there is the option here to add peripherals like a new keyboard or mouse. For me, I'm using my existing keyboard and mouse because I don't need new ones. Now PC Part Picker is not perfect in terms of compatibility, but they're usually pretty good. Usually you will know if there is some sort of compatibility issue. Maybe your motherboard doesn't fit in your case. Maybe your RAM doesn't fit your motherboard properly. And usually it will be displayed here. Now picking out your parts, your components, and pricing everything out is generally more stressful and time consuming than building your computer. And you can take that from me because I spend hours upon hours looking at different parts, looking at benchmarks, looking at comparisons, reading reviews, trying to do my homework on this. And it can be very overwhelming because there are so many choices out there. So I'll take a ton of time doing all of this and then when it comes down to building my PC it maybe takes me an hour. So that's pretty much it for the first video in this series. This part, this video is the most stressful part of the whole process. In the next video I will be placing all of these parts together and assembling a computer. So stay tuned for that. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.